Most New Zealanders have seen poplar trees, some quite beautiful, but unfortunately not all are suitable for milling if one wants to produce quality poplar timber. It's the older trees that are best for that. But a lot of farmers consider the old poplar trees as trees to be done away with, a notion from years ago when poplars were planted just to stop soil creep and hold things together. But that we're about to learn is as short-sighted as can be, because poplar can be milled on the farm and one has simply to know how to extract poplar by using farm-based milling equipment to create usable poplar timber and add in as already on the farm. Today we're visiting the Ellsworth farm of Tim Ford. Trees are his passion. And on his farm, Tim generates battens, fence posts, stays and yard rails made of poplar. All of these Tim sells to farmers at local markets. And there are plenty of offcuts sold for firewood. Producing battens from milled poplar is one important function which can be achieved by milling poplar on the farm. But there are a few pointers to watch out for. Firstly, the process of drying is the most important aspect of the whole business of getting finished battens treated. The battens need to be filleted, and the fillets shown here are made of 15 mm by 15 or 20 mm by 20 of clean scrap. And they need to be placed evenly, so there's a gap between each batten to allow air to circulate. It's been found that poplar is the fastest drying of all timbers. In fact, it can beat pine in the summer by quite a few weeks. And with summertime heat and wind, one can get a batten down to 20% in three or four weeks. To be properly prepared for the treatment, one needs to have the bundle of a size to suit what the treatment station can accommodate. So find out what size your bundle needs to be. In this case, a bundle of 300 battens made up of four by 75 battens, all spaced with fillets, and all the fillets in a straight line was required. Then it's just a matter of strapping the battens or posts ready to be taken to the treatment works. Quite a few years ago, one common use for poplar timber was as truck decking, and at this poplar really excelled. One reason was that poplar could take a hit and survive. It didn't splinter. In preparing the wood to suit this task, one kept the standard of the board as high as possible, in not having black knots that might drop out, making a hole in the deck. When the truck owner came to look, he had the option of putting some of the board with wain, which is where the bark is still on the board, or with larger knot holes, and his response was to leave them in, as the stringers on a truck deck are fairly close together. So he was quite confident that Poplar would do the job, and do it well. Our camera shows what a strong, neat job Poplar Timber has achieved on this Kenworth truck. Rob Mackay deals with children's furniture and also toys with the very popular range of toys he makes for boisterous boys. And we all know how active three-year-olds can become when they're drivers of concrete mixer vehicles or logging trucks, let alone bulldozers. This is real men's stuff, no messing around. But one thing not wanted for little fingers and bare arms are splits in the wood or splinters. They hurt big time. 
and it has been shown that poplar is much the best from a weight point of view and ease of creating small turn parts for concrete mixer trucks. So in the field of children's toys made of wood, safety, weight, smoothness and overall appearance is what New Zealand poplar offers. That's the wood many farmers want to trash. So don't do it. Poplar is worth milling. This is a piece of New Zealand pine. I have trouble with the pine on the lathe trying to turn out a barrel for the concrete mixers. Uh, very hard. After a while it ends up with a sitting for four days and didn't get back to finish the job. It splits. And at the end of the product, you, you have very bad splinters. On, on the poplar, totally different. Weight-wise, light, heavy, both dry. But the poplar turns out smooth as on the lathe. This one shatters, you've still got to do a lot of sanding afterwards, even with razor sharp chisels, have a lot of trouble with it. That's a split right up there. This, this toy is one of my favourites. It's a crane truck. It's made out of black New Zealand poplar. It is all cut out of short pieces of timber that I get from the mill which is waste ends that usually go on the fire from cattle yards and sheep yard timber and gate timber. That mask will slip out. It's a beautiful timber to work with. I've had this toy for quite a while now and it hasn't warped or split or done anything silly. It sands up so smooth. Some of my toys are Knocked up pretty quick, but the children absolutely love them. They've been going to preschool play centres around most of the country. Another feature with poplar timber, you can make cooking utensils out of it. It is noted for being a non-taint timber. So it, it's another very important feature of poplar. Operating under the name of Ruby Woodwork is another devotee of New Zealand poplar timber. In his furniture, for instance, this clever reversible step stool, shown here by Russell Collins, and in other creations, the inherent beauty of the wood is clearly seen. The wood is still lightweight when dry and resistant to splitting and therefore not something fraught with a chance of splinters. And in his quoits games, rideable horses and toy guns, one finds creations of light weight safe for children. Of particular note is the fine work in Rube's miniature farmyard layouts and other delicate representations, which are a favourite with children. The wood is carefully chosen and worked to show its underlying grain and warm colour, enhanced by the application of a clear satin protection oil. The result is almost magical. One question often asked is why mill your own trees? Well, one answer is because it's cheaper than buying the timber and you can create what your need is, changing a board size to fit the bill. Here, Russell is showing a drop of 150 by 50, a board that has many uses on the farm, used often as cattle yard railing or general farm use. And it's a lot cheaper to produce it and you'll get a lot better quality by doing your own milling. You can change it from 150 by 50 to 150 by 40. Or if your need is for panels, you can change it again to 150 by 25. It's a very popular drop for general farm use 
showing Poplar's versatility once again. In fact, just out of Havelock North is a prime example of Poplar being used in cattle yards. Mulrears Station is a cattle farm not far out of Havelock North, on the way to Elsthorpe, and John Kitchen is part owner. We asked John to comment on building replacement cattle yards using farm-grown, farm-milled poplar timber. Now we've been here for uh, several generations now and, and the farm's got a number of, uh, a lot of poplar trees on it. You know, they've been planted from early catchment board years, right through regional council years. Um, in 2002, I think it was, we uh, needed to build some new cattle yards, re rebuild poplar mainly because it's what we had on hand. Um, so it's an economic decision really. Uh, we milled about three trees, had a, a portable mill in to mill it into six by two. Um, it uh, all got tantalised. We were advised at the time it didn't need tantalising, but we thought we'd take the safe option, had it tantalised, and uh, fill it and store it here. Uh, when we came to build the cattle yards, there was enough to do about three quarters of them, but we, t we used pretty much all of it. Didn't split on, uh, when nailed. We didn't need to drill it. Uh, we didn't have any uh, any issues at all, really, in the handling of it. Um, it we were lucky; there were pretty big trees and a lot of uh, quite a lot of clears in them. Uh, tended to, tends to have some big knots, which are obviously a weakness, but um, we managed to get around those. Um, it's lasted very well. There have probably been three or four boards broken in that time by the cattle, uh, whereas the pine has had a higher percentage breaking. Uh, as, a, as a timber we, we think it takes the knocks really well. Uh, it doesn't split um, it, and uh, the nails hold well in it over time. And most cattle farmers find the same. The 150 by 50, often still referred to as a 6 by 2, is particularly good for solving problems arising on the farm. But another is where there's a need for decking, as here near Porongahau in eastern Hawke's Bay. Although poplar is excellent from which to create cattle yards and sheep pens, it's excellent too for repairing bins, making gates, fence battens and posts. Looking out across the farm, over a garden bed of flowers tossing their colourful heads in the summertime breeze, one can still enjoy the so-called amenities of modern-day life and take time out for a chat and coffee on the deck, formed from farm-grown and milled New Zealand poplar, which presents almost as good as dressed timber, although it simply came like this straight from the mill. Railings and posts are also easy to produce. New Zealand poplar is an excellent wood, probably already growing on your farm, from which to make all you need for decking, posts, railings and other farm improvements. This includes a 1.8 metre high top-up fence for deer, an example here on this Parongahau farm. Such are the benefits of poplar that it's no wonder this farmer is nurturing new seedlings to grow this excellent resource. New Zealand poplar. Another product we are trialling is the use of poplar for sawn fence posts. Now poplar will not take treatment in the round, so it, its use was not even started as a product. But I said to a bloke in a treatment station, well, it takes treatment in the sawn form, why not saw the posts? And he sort of looked at me in surprise and said, well, we haven't thought of that. So. 
These have been cut to 1.8. They are 125 by 100 or 5 by 4 inch posts. Again, you're only limited by your imagination. There is no reason why you can't cut 4 by 4s, 5 by 5s, or for something heavier, even a 6 by 6. It's just what you can handle. We've chosen 1.8. There is no reason why you can't go back to a 1.5 or a 1.6 in sheep yards. And there's a post here which is starting to crack and let go as a major flaw from the end. When he dries we'll have a look at him and he might come back to a 1.5. Or he's a very good grade of firewood. In some cases, a stand of poplars might be suffering from rotted branches or broken stems, and it then might be a suitable time to start assessing what can be retrieved to yield worthwhile timber. So, how does one proceed? Well, firstly, one should not rush in and start measuring, as the first step is to assess the possibilities. A bit later, is when you'll decide on what log length to make. In this view, we can see we have a tree with two main stems. The left-hand log, although smaller than that on the right, will yield better quality timber. Here we can see two different styles of trees, and the one on the right-hand side is a typical single leader tree. Most consider that the one on the right is the only one offering timber potential, but the left hand tree will yield at least three logs, giving high quality timber. Milling your own logs can bring forth a range of surprises because outwardly logs do not present is something that will furnish beautiful timber. But one surprise is that this cluster of sawn timber all came from a log very similar to the one being milled here. People quite often expect poplar timber to present as a rather bland off-white wood with little grain, but not so. Look at this. Beautiful grain in the extracted timber useful on the farm in a number of roles, but also a treat for furniture makers or those creating interior panels. Outwardly, the logs might cause one to think that they won't reveal beautiful timber, but opening a log can reveal quite the opposite, showing a range of interesting colours and grain patterns, and that's the versatility of New Zealand poplar. Here's a line of logs which will leave till last, and this demonstrates that one doesn't need big logs. These smaller ones are well worth retrieving, and can be milled to provide fence battens or 1.8 metre posts, but they certainly won't be wasted. Small they may be, but you'll be surprised at what can be extracted as battens. The point is, when doing your log choices, extract some bigger logs where a natural lack of limbs allows you to take a log clear of flaws. Make sure that the bearers on which the log sits are level and use a spirit level if you want accurate placement. After that, make sure the log lies parallel to the mill on the bearers. When setting the mill for the opening cut, use a spirit level and then the log will be sitting true to the mill. Then deal with the height settings so they are set at zero. Opening up a log. The purpose of opening up a log is to achieve a flat surface the length of the log, 
in order to yield full-length timber. With poplar, there is minimal waste in doing this because battens can be obtained from the sapwood until the log is ready to yield timber. Because of the taper of the log, we still need to remove waste bark and battens in order to start extracting full-length timber. So what can be said about New Zealand poplar? Well, firstly, a lot of old poplar trees, and remember it's those that provide the best milled usable timber, are on farms all over the place, and poplar can be milled using farm-based milling gear. Logs can be milled to provide endless solutions to jobs that need to be done around the farm or homestead. Just think of fence patterns, gates, posts, Think of trucks and trailers that need new decks, a sun deck around the house, toys for children. Poplar can make all those, and poplar resistant to splitting is good for cattle yards. The beasts that try to bash their way through a few six-by-twos are the ones who have the headaches, and poplar doesn't split. So have you got an added resource on your farm, one that you haven't considered yet? Give it some thought. Give it a go. Quick drying and lightweight, once dried, this wood is a winner. It is, of course, New Zealand poplar.